Hello. I'll be talking about the Dirac equation, how it relates to electricity and magnetism. So we know that the Dirac equation is uh, given by the usual I gamma mu d mu minus m psi, but if we add a electromagnetic interaction such as minus E gamma mu a mu psi equals zero, then we can find how the energies change. So it's no longer a free particle. So I'm using natural units where h bar and c equal one. So what are these gamma matrices? Well, these gamma matrices are partly the identity matrices. There are four by four matrices. They're probably the identity matrices and the poly matrices. So sigma zero is a four by four matrix which has one, zero, zero, minus one, where this sort of script one is the two by two identity matrix, and this gamma j has all the poly matrices, which contain the space x, y, and z. Okay. So we can sort of treat, we can sort of construct a four vector out of these gamma matrices. So we can have gamma mu equals uh, four vector gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. And we are using the Mikowski metric flat space time, mu nu nu. And I'll be using the plus minus 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 signature. So we need some ways of defining some properties of these uh, covariant gamma matrices to produce a Clifford algebra, which is the following anti-commutation relationship. The anti-commutator of gamma mu and gamma nu is two times the Mikowski metric. Okay, and here are some uh, here are what the gamma matrices look like when you substitute uh, what the poly matrices and the script one matrices are. So yeah, now before we can talk before we can tackle this problem with the Dirac equation and the electromagnetism, we have to first talk about classical, or enough electromagnetism to start. So I'm defining this Maxwell uh, tensor, F mu nu, to be this anti-symmetric four by four tensor, second rank. So this has a collection of E's and B's, and I'll be t defining the four gradient, D mu, partial mu is d by dt nabla, and the electromagnetic four potential is the electromagnetic scalar potential with the vector potential. And to lower these, since the Dirac equation, the ordinate, since this interaction term has a lower down, a downstairs mu, we have to apply the metric to lower the indices. So where g mu nu is eta mu nu, which is the Mikowski metric of diagonal one minus one minus one minus one. So we are all set to go, and we can ask interesting questions such as, how is the energy of a non-relativistic electron related to its spin in the presence of an external magnetic field? So we can assume this onsatz of the wave function psi to be like since there exists a high frequency part whose angular frequency is the mass in natural units where omega equals m since the particle is non-relativistic it is multiplied by a lower frequency part so now we substitute this in into the Dirac equation with the electromagnetic interaction so using Einstein's summation convention, where you have, have a upstairs indice right next to the same indice, but it's downstairs, we can sum over this. So I'm summing over the time portion and the space portion. The space portion is labeled by the letter J. So I just expanded this sum. So mu goes from zero to three. So now uh, substituting in what gamma zero, gamma J, partial j are respectively, and s as well as substituting what psi is, which psi is this, e to the minus i m t u v, and we get this. So now we apply a uh, chain rule and product rule, and 
factor out the exponential and we get this after a lot of math and rearrangement we get this equation now we have two equations because we have uh, two column vectors or two row vectors sorry and dropping the exponential term we have uh, two equations which is i u dot plus i sigma vector dot into the gradient of v minus e times the scalar electromagnetic potential times u plus sigma a which is the vector potential of the electromagnetic four vector times v equals zero and the second equation is minus 2mv minus i v dot minus i sigma dot gradient of u plus e electromagnetic scalar potential times v minus e sigma dot a u equals zero. So now we now take into the fact that this is a non-relativistic uh, system so v dot and e phi v are much less than two times mv. So now we can rewrite equation two where this i which this and that go away because this is more dominant. So therefore equation two solving for v becomes this. Now we can substitute what two is which is this into one. So the algebra becomes a little bit messy so I'll be skipping that and simplifying this into this prettier expression. So now I'll be applying some properties or identities of the sigma matrices such that a dot sigma times b dot sigma equals a dot b times identity matrix plus i times a cross b dot into the sigma matrix matrix where sigma vector sigma is sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z as well so also another consideration I'll be using a Coulomb gauge where the divergence of the vector potential of the four vector equals zero of the of the of the, of the vector of a equals zero, as well as the fact that b is the curl of the vector potential a. So using these two facts or three, I can write this equation. From I can write equation one by as this. So now. What's interesting is this sort of looks like the Schrodinger equation, which is H U H acting on U, the Hamiltonian H equals to I U dot. So I'll defining the spin matrix S to be one half sigma. Usually it would be H bar over two, but since I'm using H bar over two times sigma vector, but since I'm using actual units, H bar equals one. So now the Hamiltonian of this interaction now becomes this. It's the usual the, it's the usual kinetic energy plus E phi. If we're not if we're not considering uh, the Dirac equation, if we're just considering the regular Schrodinger equation, but we have some extra terms, however. So this is the Hamiltonian of this interaction. So another cool thing is using the Feynman slash notation. We can write uh, the partial derivative of i gamma mu d partial mu as slash. So it's an, just just to reemphasize, uh, if you see this in different literatures, they mean they're equivalent. So Richard Feynman, the father of electrodynamics. It made a very made this very successful theory. So I'll define the moment um, mu sub e vector is g e over two m s. So we can see that the coupling of the electron spin to an external magnetic field is the Hamiltonian is minus mu e dot b, where g is the s factor. However, this is explicitly calculated to be g equals to it should this should be two which is, this should be a 2 here, which is a major success of the Dirac equation. Quantum electrodynamics, however, provides further corrections to G. 
of order of alpha, which equals to 2 plus alpha over h bar, which is roughly equal to 2.02. .02. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, favorite, show your friends.